Next up, we have another independent candidate, Nathan Zembroglio. I hope I said that right. No, but I had a lifetime of Mr. and I said this year. You're just Nathan to me, I'm Sam sorry. from Yo. It's just Nathan to me. Oh, anyway, it's all right. I know, you're, I'm knowing you just as Nathan. So, <laughs> take it away. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It's a great honour to be here. You know me, I've been on council since 2016 first elected as a Liberal and now standing again as an Independent and I've received more praise and encouragement since I found my independence and my voice than uh, before. I'm a school teacher by trade. I've lived in the Hawkesbury my entire life. I have lived in Oakville, I have lived in Grass Hill, I have lived in North Richmond and I have lived in Richmond. Before we turn to how to remedy the current problems with this council. We've got to diagnose the problem accurately with some facts. It is true that under the leadership that this council has had for 17 of the last 20 years, council's debt has risen from $16.3 million in 2021 to over $62.5 million today. Our net operating result before grants, and that is to say before we include all of that large S that are kind of one-off things. I mean, we've received $98 million from West Invest. You can't put that into your daily tally. Those are special things for special projects. But our operating result um, went from 77.3% in 2021 down to 52% now, and is forecast to drop to 43%. Now, the Office of Local Government benchmark for a healthy council is 60%. So council's financial situation is deteriorating. The amount of assets that each resident is responsible for, it's like that figure, you know, what's the national debt of each man, woman and child in Australia? Well, our residents and ratepayers are responsible for $20,630 of assets per resident. Our near neighbours in Blacktown, Hills and Penrith, the figure is between ten dollars and $12,000 per resident. And I, I list that figure because that is what we are responsible for the upkeep of. And the way in which that's measured is what we call the infrastructure backlog. The report card that staff tally about the state of our roads and parks and community infrastructure. And we are going backwards. There is a document that went to Council's meeting in April called our Long-Term Financial Plan. It paints a dire picture. We are facing, if we don't do something, an infrastructure backlog of $162 million within the next nine years. The way around that is to jack up everybody's rates. Again, we jacked up everybody's rates. I didn't vote for it, but Council's rates were uh, raised by over a third in 2017 and it came with a, la a large list of capital projects that we promised the community with a sweetness. Things like sealing Packer Road. Earlier this year we came to within a breath of reneging on that promise and it's only because I and like-minded councillors said we have to keep the promises that we made otherwise how can we ever take these figures to the electorate and ask them for more money when we haven't acquitted the rate rise that we did previously well enough. The delinquency on our council rates, the number of people who are behind on payment of their rates has risen from 8.3% in 2021 to 11.17% today. And again, the OLG benchmark is under 0.5% or lower. Now this has happened on the watch of the current leadership the leadership of the current chamber and unless the parties, the candidates and the tickets are presenting these figures honestly to the electorate then they're just doing a bait and switch. You shouldn't tolerate a ticket. You shouldn't tolerate a ticket that talks about representing the community or being fair or having good, good leadership when that leadership hasn't been demonstrated and when these numbers are disguised. In fact, that financial plan that came to Council in September puts it two scenarios. The, the decline scenario that I've just talked about and a resolve scenario where our infrastructure backlog can be brought back to zero percent. That's the healthy position. But that will require 
a special rate variation and nobody is talking about that. In fact, that document doesn't put a figure to the amount of rate hike that would have to be asked for. So if we're going to seek a mandate, we need to be talking about this now. I don't know what my position on that will be. I voted against the last one, but I also acknowledge the fact that these figures are dire. When people ask us what the two most important issues are, bar none, it's integrity and accountability. And the second is the state of our roads and infrastructure. Am I out of time? Well, there you are. There would be more to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.